So basically, we have to remember three points, which highlight why we are engaged. So first of all, we think it's a good idea to be supporting the UN Development Development Goal number six, which you are very familiar with. The second point is, BIAC is committed to societal engagement, not only in fighting the effects of other diseases. We are in family planning as well for many, many years. Uh, and uh, we are working on, let's say, to increase our engagement in access to medicine as well, which is one of the future fields where I think many pharmaceutical companies will enter on in the next five to ten years. Thirdly, and this was mentioned earlier today, by the Fourth Atlantic Declaration, which you are very familiar with, and which gives a great push to improve engagement in neglectotropic diseases. So I think you are pretty much familiar with, with that slide, so I have not to go into any more details, and it has been discussed today. So one disease we talked about today was African sleeping sickness. And we are engaged here since a quite long time. And you all know that this disease is a critical one. And the good news is, according to WHO, there is a fair chance to eradicate this disease by 2020. So is, let's say, the outlook of WHO to get that disease may be off the table by 2020. What we are basically doing is we are cooperating with WHO for quite a while. So actually, we started a cooperation in 2000, and we are doing, let's say, two things. One is we donate products, and you see that uh, our annual donation is about 400,000 tablets of Nofotimox which is an effective drug in combination with another drug to fight against that disease. More interesting, and that goes to prior discussions, is we started last year a new project with WHO in the, dear, in the Democratic Republic of Congo. And the problem is what has been addressed this morning, how to reach rural areas. I think this is a critical point to get to the next last mile. And one solution of maybe many is mobile teams. So WHO, in cooperation with other organizations in DRC, established mobile teams. So they go into the rural area, try to do a little bit of awareness around the disease, do diagnostic and treatment. And we were very convinced when we were approached by WHO that this is a good idea to get more involved in this disease and really work on the ground to help people who are may dangered to get that disease or even have that disease. So this is what we have to remember. What I will not spend much time on is that another function in the company which we call bio and environmental science support vector control programs. So this is all about nets and malaria nets. And nets to fight against um, H A T as well. And I come back to that one a little bit later in my presentation. So when I move on, you know this is what I was talking about. So it really goes down over time. And the projection is that by 2020, it will go below the threshold of 5,000 diseases on an annual basis, which is good news, I think. Another one which is important to mention is how to achieve that. And I think one major point is the first bullet here, strengthen and coordinate control measures and ensure field activities and to strengthen existing surveillance systems and ensure accessibility to a diagnostic and treatment. Where I think we have to talk more about in the future is on diagnostic. Because the treatments are there, but to diagnose the people and to get them the treatment maybe is still an issue which has not been, let's say, reached a level where everybody is happy with. Another one where we are engaged is in Chagas disease, though now we are not talking about Africa, now we are talking about um, 
Latin America predominantly, but what you see from the slide, there's already some cases identified even in Europe and Australia due to migration. The Chagas disease is, let's say, a challenging disease because in many countries here in Latin America, when you talk to the government and officially, they will tell you we do not have that disease because it's a disease of the poor and they want to avoid to admit that we have that problem. This gives all organizations engaged in fighting against Chagas disease an additional challenge, how to get a product into the country and how to make effective programs happen that tackle that disease. And there is quite a number of countries who are affected. And here we also work together with WHO. Now it's about 14 years where we include, where WHO listed the 40 marks on the list of essential drugs. We started to donate 500,000 tablets. We increased the number by 2012 to 1 million tablets, which gives WHO, let's say, sufficient opportunities in terms of treatment options to treat people. What we do, what we do in uh, addition to that, we have developed a 30 milligram tablet, which is more convenient for the patient because the 30 milligram is exactly the dosage you need on a daily basis. Before that, we had this 120 milligram tablet, which was a good option, but which is not the best option you can offer. What we here do in addition is we try to set up more clinical trials in getting more data on the effectiveness. And interesting enough, we have identified and worked together with FDA to get that product approved in the US. Because you have to know that in the US, there are more than 200,000 cases uh, identified which suffer from Chagas disease, which give the health authorities in the US a little bit of a headache because they do not have a sufficient treatment registered. This is why we are engaged in development work to get that one approved by FDA maybe in three to four years. And everybody who is familiar with clinical trials know it takes time to run a clinical trial to get the right people into the trial, to run the trial and to get the results and to bring it into a submission dossier. Our colleagues from crop science are engaged in vector control programs. And this is an interesting area because here the colleagues from crop science are working together with the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation in a term of a research program. And the interesting part of that one, it is really a private partner, pu uh, pu private par public partnership in terms where we bring in the knowledge, the resources, the labs, and the library, and where we get, let's say, funds from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation by a third party to do all this research work. And I think I, think I would like to add two more points to the discussion. One is it was talked about is pharmaceutical company doing sufficient work in terms of R&D. And here we are, let's say, entering a new field in the near future to look after solutions for treating river blindness. And we are in, in negotiations with DNDI to develop one of our substances in our library for that disease. And I think we are moving pretty much forward and hope maybe that you will read a press announcement maybe in the next couple of weeks. It might not take such long to get the deal done, right? And again, it will take, let's say, about four to five years before you will read that the product is registered because we have to run a full-fledged clinical program, which really takes time. And I think I only can invite everybody by being united in fighting against NTD, 
So it was said this morning, is there enough exchange of information between pharmaceutical countries slash private, par private sector, NGOs and governments? I mean, if you have an idea, knock at our door, we will open it and then we'll find out what is the best way forward. So this is an invitation to all of you. You can contact us. We will listening. Thank you very much. <laughs>